Okay, no. so at the top of your paper, we just talked a little bit about real numbers. Okay, so you have rational and irrational are under the real number category. So you still need to be able to recognize those. We'll work a few of those in a second. Hello, right here. Real numbers, rational and irrational. So any kind of example could be any number that you basically know, except the square root of a negative. So it could be a whole number. It could be a fraction. It could be uh, a decimal that repeats. It could be the square root of something. It could be pi. Okay, those are all examples of real numbers. So you'll have to determine the difference between real, imaginary, and complex in just a second, but it's not bad. Yeah. Okay, so imaginary numbers. You guys can't talk because then they can't pick up my voice. So imaginary numbers, it's not a real number. So like I drew that picture, we're going outside of the real number category. And it says it is the square root of a negative number. So this is the main part. It is the square root of a negative number. So some examples might be 2i. So we use that little i. It's not a variable like x or y. It actually represents something. So you could have 2i. You could have i by itself. You could have negative 5i. You could have square root of any negative number. You could have square root of negative 5. Square root of negative 9. Okay, where did the i come from? So the i is the actual imaginary number that we're going to use. And I'll show here, I'll pull this out. So the definition of i, what does i even mean? i is just the square root of negative 1. So if I ask you what is i, you should be able to tell me square root of negative 1. Or if I say what is square root of negative 1, you should be able to tell me i. <coughs> Holy macaroni. So negative square root of negative one is i. Yes. And square root of i is. No. Okay, that's the mean. Square root of negative one is i. Square root of i is not negative one. What do you mean? So something backwards. Yeah. If I, how do we get rid of a square root? We did that in the last chapter. You square it. If I square this side, and I square this side, what happens to the square root, Ashley? What happens to the square root here? It goes away. So negative 1 equals i squared. Okay, that's the second thing you need to know. So i equals square root of negative 1, and then this is the second most important thing you need to know. Actually, they're equal, but that's okay. So you have square root of negative 1 equals i, and i squared equals Okay, so complex numbers. I think you already have this. Complex numbers are numbers that can be written in the form a plus bi. So you have seven. So you have real numbers and imaginary numbers. If we put the two together, you get a complex number, which is just this thing, a plus bi. So you have a real part or a real number part, and you have an imaginary number part. So when I say complex numbers, that just means when you put the two together. You just have a real number, you have an imaginary number, you put them together, and it's a complex number. <coughs> so then there's this lovely little diagram. So inside complex numbers, you have the two separated. You have real numbers and you have imaginary numbers. And so we could put some examples in there if you want. We could say some real numbers could be five, negative 10, square root 3, we could say 2 pi, whatever, anything you want there for real numbers. Square root of negative 10. So on the imaginary number part, we could have anything like 2i, negative 5i, square root negative 5, any of those are imaginary numbers. Because i is equal to square root of negative 1. So when we have that negative, we're going to pull it out and it's going to become an i. Can you do a measure of your numbers right now? How? Hang on. Square root of negative 1. So if I rewrite, 
if I rewrite that 2i, I could rewrite that as 2 square root negative 1. Oh, I see. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. How are those like imaginary frequencies? It's not, it's not imaginary like your imagination imaginary. No, it's a difference. I know. Come on, son. Okay, so then complex numbers. Some examples would be 2 plus 3i. So I'm just putting a real number with an imaginary number or five minus four i. Okay, that's all a complex number is, is putting a real number with an imaginary number. Devin. Oh, I don't want to say that's question. Okay. Okay. So on this part here, these eight, it just says what sets are the following numbers members of? So you have three sets. You have real numbers. You have imaginary numbers. You have complex numbers, so the combination of the two. So number one is eight. What is that a member of? Real. Real numbers. How about number two? Square root of negative 25. Imaginary. Uh, no. <laughs> number three would be what? Imaginary, because it has that I. Imaginary. Number four? Real. real. Combination is like this, and you have a real number and an imaginary number. That's complex. This is this should be real. Okay, how about number five? Complex. Complex, right? So you have the two together. So the little complex two. Which one? Number six, yep, complex. Complex again. Number seven is also complex. And the other one's imaginary. And the other one is Real. real. The other one is real. Okay, it says find the values of x and y that makes each equation true. So it's not terribly difficult. At first glance, it looks difficult. But what we're going to do, we're going to set the real parts equal to the real parts. So real meaning there's no i's. So if you look at number 9 and I look at the left-hand side of the equal sign, what will be the real parts on the left? 3x. 3x. So I set 3x equal to, what's the real part on the right? 10y. 10y uh, has an i with it, six. so just 6. Six. How would I solve for x? Divide by 3. Divide by 3, so x equals 3, 2. two. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the first part. Set the real equal to the real. Then we'll set the imaginary, I'm going to abbreviate here, set the imaginary equal to the imaginary. Wait, you missed out? Uh, I got the notes. What a worksheet. Oh, okay. So the imaginary part on the left will be <laughs> negative 5i equals, what? Well, on the right, 10y to the negative 10yi. Huh? So you set imaginary equal to the imaginary. And so it has an i in it. So how would I solve for y? Divide by five y. Uh, the y. You can't mess Shit up. up. You can't. It's just multiplication. Like if I take the i away and I say solve for y, you would divide by negative ten. Same thing. So divide by i. So divide by negative ten i. You just divide by two things. So on this side, what would you do the y? I'm solving for y. Here, go back to Why the don't you divide from negative 5i? 2y equals 10. You divide by the 2, right, to get the y by itself? Uh, sure. So that's what I'm doing here, dividing by everything around it. I want the y by itself. So the negative 10 cancels and the i cancels. So I just get y equals the i cancel 1 half. Start. That's it. You're just solving for x and y that make that equation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay, number 10. Oh, yeah, you should get an x and a y. So there's always two answers. Okay, number 10. So what's the real part on the left? 2x. 2x. And what's the real part on the right? Negative 8. Negative 8. 4. Negative 4. Negative 4. Wait, where do you make it? Oh, wow, he's doing that part. Okay, what's the imaginary part on the left? Negative 6i. And the imaginary on the right? 20yi. 
What do you divide by? 20i. Divide by 20i. So y equals 3 over 10. Can it be 10 over 3 too? If you just divide no. it. It should be 3 over 10. Why can't you divide negative six? Because if you divide negative, if you divide negative six over here, you're not going to get the y by itself. And I'm going to get y by itself. Yes, negative. Sorry. Thank you. Roy. So, like, basically, you don't worry about the parentheses. Right. I just take the parentheses off because, I, like, on this one, I'm not sure why they're there. If it's just showing you it's all in front of the i or what, but I just sort of take them off when I set up the equation. Okay, so I want you to look at your worksheets, and the two that I specifically want to make note of, you don't want to like this on your notes. Number eight, let me erase some of those. Number eight, on the right-hand side of the real equation, you have two things. You have the negative 12x and the eight, okay? And then same thing on number nine, you have a 9x and a minus five. All right, so on the back, the things you need to know, like tomorrow if you come into class, you should know these two things. Ah. If I say what's i, you should say square root of negative 1. If I say what's square root of negative 1, you should say i. 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 And if I say what's i squared, you should say negative uh, 1. Are you okay, so on something like this first one, square root of negative 16, you can technically Split this up into a square root of a negative 1 and the square root of 16. Five. So all I did was I took out the negative 1. So what is the square root of negative 1 equal? Five. I. Five. I. And what's the square root of 16? 4. Four. Four. So it's just 4i. Four so you take out that negative and it becomes an i and then you take the square root of 16 like normal. So what would the square root of negative 49 be? 7i. So the i comes from the negative, and then you take the square root of 49. I, 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 you just find the square root of yes. So number one, what's the square root of negative 4? Uh, I, 2i. I. No, I, 2i. I. <laughs> so you can split it up. You can do a square root of a negative 1 and a square root of 4. Square root of negative 1 is i, and square root of 4 is 2. So 2 i. <laughs> Miss out. can we just do it as regular? Don't put the square root of anything in there. Okay, let's see. Six, yes, if four, there's a negative two, under the two, inside. Because three, on something four, like, six, oh, they all have negatives four, except number 3. Square root of six, so that'll be fine. Okay, number two. So first thing, I would take out the i. I do the i first, but you can do it last if you want. So I'm going to have an i in my answer. And then break up 24 just like we did in the last Six test. Six and four. Six and four. Two and three. Two and two. Wait, so three. Two and two. 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 Two and no, no. <laughs> well, but it becomes an I. And then what goes on the inside? Square root 6. So 2i squared 6. So the only thing I added in there is the i. That's it. Otherwise, it's the same as you did on the last test. Okay, number 3. What does i squared equal? I. Negative 1. Negative. I squared equals negative 1. So then this is really 7 <coughs> times negative 1, which is? Negative 7. Negative 7. I. So when you're doing these, you should never leave an I squared in your answer because I squared is just negative 1. Okay? So you don't have to worry about I squared. You just change them to negative 1. 6I. So number 4, the 36 is, yes, 6. I hear that. What's the negative? I. I. How many x's come outside? Three. Three. How many y's? Dose. Anything left on the inside? No. no. So I know it looks weird. I think we took off variables on everything else, so we're only going to deal with numbers. I think we forgot to take that one off. 
Okay, number two, or number, sorry, five. Let's do the 18 first. What can I break 18 up into? Two and nine, two and nine, three and three. So I circle the threes. So what goes on the outside? Six, right, three times the two, six. What goes on the inside? Two eyes. Two, uh, the eye goes on the outside. Yeah, good. Got it. Only on the outside. Yes, it always is on the outside. Oh, yeah. Okay, number six. Number six, what's the square root of negative four? Two I. Two I. So I'm multiplying here. I square which is negative six. So multiply the three times the two is six. I times I is squared. I squared. And what's I squared? Negative one. Negative one. So what's our answer? Negative six. Negative six. So basically, anytime you have an I squared, it just changes the sign of whatever that number is. If it was a negative seven I squared, it would become a positive seven. Okay, number, let's jump to number eight. Let's simplify, simplify this 108. What goes, what goes into 108? I think it's four and 27. So two and two, three and nine, three and three. So, we have 30i, because a 6 comes out, we multiply it with this 5i. So 30i square root of, I still have negative 3, because I haven't taken out that negative yet. Negative. So if I take out that negative, what goes on the outside? 30i squared. Right, so I'm taking out this negative. Let me switch colors here. Taking out this negative, so I get 30i squared, square root 3. And what does i squared become? Negative 1. Negative 1. So then it's negative 30. Sorry, there's not a lot of room there. Negative 30 square root of 3. Yay.